Hey guys, it's Pete with Chatter. Uh, today I'm going to show how to create a Chatter Sync device DIY from start to finish. So basically what this device is, is it's a Raspberry Pi Zero W um, that behaves as a flash drive. So for your CNC machines, you don't have to be running flash drives around anymore. You can just drop it uh, straight from your computer. So we can see right here, Chatter Sync, we can just drop our programs right on there and we don't have to uh, fuss around flash drives. So here's how to do it. Uh, really simple build materials. Pi Zero W, you can get this for like 15 bucks. A uh, flash drive, or a uh, SD card actually, um, and a micro USB cable. So this is pretty simple. We have everything uh, online on GitHub. So we're gonna go to uh, GitHub here, GitHub, and just search uh, Chatter Sync. Boom, it'll come up. We've got the uh, files for the enclosure, but the main important part, oh, and a bunch of instructions, of course. Uh, the main important part is the SD card image. So we're gonna go to this, it's just got url.txt, and this is where we need to download from. So we'll just paste that in the address bar, and we've got the file downloading um, to our downloads. Save. So this is a pretty big file, it's like five gigs. Uh, so in the meantime, you can download the Raspberry Pi imager if you don't already have that. That's basically what lets your computer uh, write the image onto the SD card. So we'll just search uh, Raspberry Pi imager. And all these links will be in the description too. Uh, anyways, so we'll click there and then we'll just do download for Windows. I've already got it installed, but this is where you get it. And then once this downloads, uh, we'll be able to put the image onto this uh, SD card right here. So now that we've got it downloaded, we're gonna go to our uh, Raspberry Pi imager in Windows. Hit yes right here. And first thing you're gonna do is choose your operating system. So these are all the default Raspberry Pi like OS's. We wanna use the Chatter Sync one, which has everything pre-configured already. So we'll hit use custom. And then I will just go to my uh, downloads folder if I can find it. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder. And then right at the top, I got chattersync.image. I'm going to open that. And next, we need to tell the computer what to put it on. So I'm going to grab my uh, little SD card and put it in a micro SD reader. Just plop that right in my computer. And a bunch of messages are going to come up. We can just cancel all that crap out. Anyways, under storage. Hit choose storage and I'm going to choose the SD card right there, sand disk. Next we're just going to hit write and then confirm everything's going to be erased on there. That's good. Hit yes and it's going to go ahead and start writing. All right, so we got this uh, completed imaging. So it's going to actually mount this SD card and we can see all the files in there on boot FS. If that doesn't show up off the bat, just pull it and put it back in. It'll mount on your computer. And now we have to configure the Wi-Fi. This part's really important. This is where people mainly get tripped up. This thing does not have a screen on it. So um, you have to do this part right. and It'll work perfectly. If you don't do it, you might have to redo it. So check it out. Basically what we have to do is put a file onto this SD card that's gonna tell it what our Wi-Fi info is. So I've provided an example here in resources uh, wpasupplicant.conf. So I'm gonna copy this file here, and actually I'm just gonna right click in the root of this uh, boot drive and hit new text document. And I'm gonna call it wpa underscore supplicant, two p's, dot conf. So we've got that file there that we just made. We're gonna right click, edit with VS Code or text editor, whatever, and we're gonna paste in uh, what was there in the GitHub repo. And then there's just two things you need to change here. I guess if you're outside the US, change this to your two letter country code. And then for network, we're gonna type in our SSID. So for us, that's chatter testnet, and then our passphrase, which is uh, ch testnet. And we're gonna save this file onto the root directory of this SD card here. So now that's there. And what's gonna happen is when this boots, it's gonna read that file know to set the Wi-Fi information and then restart itself on our Wi-Fi network. So from here, we're ready to go. We're gonna close this window out and we'll just pull the SD card. And we're actually gonna start by bench testing this. So instead of going out to the machine and, and plugging it all in, we're just gonna plug it into our computer right here. So I'm gonna use our micro SD cable. What's really important is on this board, there's actually two uh, things that are labeled differently. So one's USB, one's power in. 
This one, marked USB, is the one you want to plug into because that can actually do data over it. So we're going to plug this guy in and then just put the other end into the computer. So really it's going to be on the network and also act as a uh, USB drive. So on the first boot, this thing has some housekeeping that it does automatically, so it might take like up to a minute or so um, in order to get everything set right. So it needs to take the image, expand it to the size of the SD card, needs to read that Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi file, get it on the network, all that stuff. So just be patient with this, and you're going to see on your computer it's going to pop up as a drive. You know, it'll make that little sound and then it'll probably go offline and come online again. So just be patient with it and let it, you know, basically just settle down before we go to the next step. All right, so this thing has restarted a couple times and now we can see on our PC, we have the, um, the D drive, which is this guy, and there's a test file on there, which we can just open up with code. So this is it actually behaving as a USB drive, like it would to uh, your CNC machine. So the next important step is to figure out where this thing is on your network. It's gonna have an IP that's auto assigned by your network and we have to figure out um, where to find that. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, if you have a router you're familiar with, like we use the UDM here, um, it'll show up on your client list as chatter sync there. And it's important to find the IP. So the IP for us is 10.0.1.133. Now, if you don't have access to your router's client list, there's another way you can actually do that, which is outlined um, in the readme of our Git repo. So. If you just search uh, Wi-Fi or let's see, network scan, I believe. All right, here it is. You're going to install nmap, which is just a little utility in PowerShell. And then we're going to run this command here, which is basically going to search for anything named chatter on the network. I'm going to paste that in my command line. I already have nmap installed and I'm going to replace this with the IP address range that I'm looking for. So if I look at this computer, this is on 10.0.2. You know, whatever. So we know this is going to be there as well. So I'm just going to replace that with uh, 10.0.2 and it's going to search range 1 through 255 and then it's going to filter out things called chatter. So on my network here, we know we're 10.0.1 and then the chatter box, or not the chatter box, the chatter sync is going to be 1 through 255. So we're going to run that scan and it's going to find here, all right, we found the chatter sync at 10.0.1.133. So the next step is to actually add it to VS Code as a SFTP client. Now you can, or as a server rather. So you can do this with, you know, FileZilla or whatever. We like the Chatter uh, VS Code extension. You can see here, you can download it. It's free, it's awesome. And it just puts everything right here, you know, with your machine. So I'm just gonna go to add new machine, enter the machine's name. We're gonna be putting this on the Haas ST10Y. The IP that we just found is 10.0.1.133. The protocol is going to be SFTP. That's the secure one. The username by default is chatter. The password is also chatter. And we have added this. Now there's one last step we need to do in settings is actually tell it where on the uh, chatter sync device to look. So you're going to hit that button because right now it's showing us our whole chatter sync and we just want the USB volume. So we're going to change this to slash MNT. That's where we're mounting slash chatter sync. We're going to save this. It's going to refresh. And now we actually see those same two files um, that we had on the, um, let's see, on the USB mount. And we can see them right there. So let's just do a test of a, a file transfer. So I'm going to come in here. Let's just choose this and I'm going to drag it onto the chatter sync. This is going to go over the Wi-Fi and send the file. Now we're going to see something real quick happen on the computer. It's going to unmount the chatter sync device and remount it. So it's basically the equivalent of pulling the USB drive out and putting it back in. And then now when Windows calms down, come on, baby. All right, we can see our drive here and it has that new file that we just put on there. All right, so we've got our SD card ready on here. We're gonna take it next door. They got some 3D printers and stuff and we're gonna test it out. Riley, we have dogs. So this is the chatter office over here, but over here is the shop that I used to own. Here, come on out. Um, and now uh, it is a fully working machine shop that's sold. We get to come over here and we get to uh, test new stuff out and hijack their 3D printers. All right, so this is Brody. 
Um, oh. I don't know anything about 3D printing, but Brody actually does. Uh, we've got a print going in the machines for this, so we're going to show you how to do that. But Brody, I think, has a couple tips or something on, on how it's printed or things to watch out for. So, what do yeah. you got? So, uh, yeah, we normally just grab it right from the, uh, just from Cheddar.dev. Um, it's got the, uh, the new STLs up, so that's been nice to use. Um, we are to use uh, Crowley as our slicer of choice here, but, you know, whatever you want to use. Um, in here, we just have it, uh, make sure you have it set to whatever your, uh, your plaster you're going to use. Like our, we like to use PETG here quite a bit, so we just have it set up for PETG. Um, we get a little stringy here, so we like to run supports um, with running our PETG. You know, the enders uh, like to be stringy that way. So if you're running something like an ender or a PETG or a stringy plastic, uh, throw some ports on there, but other than that, um, you know, 0.12 to 0.2 uh, layer thickness, uh, it's just fine. So, cool, yeah. so let's see. And then so uh, once we slice it, we'll throw an SD card and we've got some printing over here. So we got two printing right here, um, coming out in uh, some nice black pet G. Um, they're just about done. One's got about 20, 30 minutes left. One's got about five minutes left. And then uh, it'll be off and we can So we jumped the gun on our recording. So we'll fake this part. All right, so we are done, right? Print is all done, all finished up. Cool. So I'm just gonna come here and then just Please. take it off. Let's restart, let's give it a minute to cool. <laughs> okay, so this time we're actually done with the print and Brody's gonna take it off and I don't know. Yeah, so our uh, print's all done here. We have about uh, three and a half hours to get it done. So here we are with our chatter boxes. We've got some support material underneath to remove, but other than that, she's all good. There we go. All right, um, so we're gonna put this guy in here, and with any luck, snaps right in there. USB lines up, that's always a good sign. And then the top snaps right on. Look at that. Beautiful tolerance. All right. So let's throw it on the. Oh, wait. Actually, we need to do the magnets. Uh, do you want to show them how to do that? Because yeah. I screwed up <laughs> last time. So this is one of the versions with uh, no, uh, no little cutouts in the bottom. But we've got our magnets here and we've got our super glue here. So let's go ahead. A little dab there. A little dab there. Nice and even on either side. Grab two magnets. Put one and one. There we go. And there you go. And just like that, let it dry for a few seconds. And we'll be good to go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, shall we? Let's throw it on the machine. Yeah, throw it on the machine. Alrighty. So this part is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Just gonna have oh, that's a little sticky still. <laughs> okay, um, so we're gonna have the uh, the USB port and drop that guy right in there. Magnet it on this part. Haas doesn't like it when you put magnets on their <laughs> controls, apparently, as I learned. Um, so we'll do that. We'll just plug it right into the uh, USB port, and it's gonna get both power and data off of there. Anyways, so this is now hooked up as a USB drive. We're gonna come over here like you normally would, hit list program, and then we've got, of course, our memory and our USB device. Look at this, beautiful. Uh, we have our test program on there, as well as the thing we had just sent to it earlier. Um, boom, there we are. Now, one thing to note um, on this chatter sync device, whenever you're actually sending a file to it, um, it's going to disconnect and reconnect as if you've disconnected and reconnected a USB drive. So if you decide to run a program off of it, be very careful that nobody else is running onto it. We recommend not to run programs off of this. Just do, you know, same rules as you normally would with a flash drive. You have this program here. All right, all good. F2, copy onto memory. And then um, we're not gonna overwrite what they have, but um, yeah, so keep it pretty simple. The other cool thing about this ChatterSync device that I should mention, it's not just for pre-NGC hoses. Um, if you have a FANUC machine like what's over here, um, let me just pull this off. Um, you can actually take this, the machine's off, and, and this one actually has a data server, so you don't really need it, but if you have a, fan, uh, <clears throat> if you have a FANUC machine that doesn't have a data server, 
Uh, you can use this basically to do the same thing. Um, you know, just magnet it wherever and plug it right in to the uh, USB port as you would a flash drive and it'll work. So it's a good option um, if you wanna get FTP on a Fanuc machine that can read USB drives but can't do FTP. Uh, we've also tested this, or I haven't, but uh, users have tested it on um, Herco's, Mazax, uh, I believe Siemens controls, and a couple others. So it's a pretty universal thing. I know the biggest application that people tend to use it for is uh, those Haas pre-NGC machines. So anyways, try this out. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions, you can always get support inside our Discord server, or you can just email us at support at chatter.dev or me directly at pete at chatter.dev.